Hi everyone, good evening, welcome to the class. Good evening everyone and welcome to the 9th and 10th channel of Baiju's. All of you are the achievers and it's our mission midterm. Good evening everyone, good evening, how are you all? Yes, I hope that all of you are in good health. Awesome. So today is a very special session, right? I'm good. Thank you for asking. I hope that you are also good. Awesome. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I hope that you can see me clearly and I hope that you can hear me clearly. And I'm sure you can see the smiley on the screen. <clears throat> very good. Very good. Awesome. So, without taking much of the time, we will start, right? Now, of course, today, what are we doing? We are doing, or we are looking into the questions of the NCRT for the chapter Control and Coordination. Yes? All the best, Keshav, Sanskriti is there. We have Adibiha, sorry, Adiba, Status King, Sahil. Right, we have Tejaswini, Teju. We have Sejal, Sujal, Rhea, Dheeraj, Amrita, Rakesh. So many of you here. Suman, Tejas, Bharati. All the best, Bharati. Saida, Alone Gaming, Harish, Madhuri, Anamika, Bharadwaj, Sana, Rinku. Hello, 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 hello. Yes. Awesome. So I hope that all of you are ready for the NCRE questions for the chapter Control and Coordination. All the best, Ria. Thank you so much, Amol. Anmol, sorry. Tanmay. Yes. Good evening. Okay. So let's get started, everyone. So we will be looking forward to the questions, right, Babat? Before we start, I want you to subscribe to the channel. It means a lot, right? It means a lot. Please, if you are new here, take a movement and subscribe to the channel of 9th and 10th. Very soon, we will be a family of 100k and that is impossible without your support. So, please hit the like button if you are new here and watching the session, session for the very first time. Awesome. And something is coming up. So, okay. How many of you actually are interested, you know, um, in uh, writing the examination like J or the NEET? Tell me. And I'm sure many of you are asking about, ma'am, please have a session, right? And we did a session in the past also. But uh, time by time, it is really very important for us to little bit take a focus on it, right? So, everyone, this Sunday, right? This Sunday, me and Khushbu ma'am will be coming, right? Sunday, it is, it is 18th of September, okay? And it's at noon time. So, have your breakfast. And meet us at 12.30. Yes? Yes, they just need all the best for your examination. Uh, Dynamic Gamings, we already have the session for the question. If you're asking, we had a session of NCRT exemplar and the NCRT questions. So everyone, on 18th of September, me and Kushu Ma'am will be coming and we will be discussing that how you can start preparing for the examination like J and the NEET. Yes, so I want all of you to register for this. Okay, yes, register for this, everyone. Registration is absolutely free. I'm telling you this. So I want to see you all in all in class, right? Everyone, okay, I want to see all of you in the class. We will try our best to have, uh, you know, to solve all of your questions. Okay, it's a very interesting session, definitely. I'll actually will be helping you to understand that how to prepare, what all needs things that you need to make sure from now itself. Happy birthday, Sanskriti. Okay, class is there on 14th of September, 12.30 p.m., right? You can easily register by clicking the link in the description below, right? It's a very simple link. Just click it, there are a few details, right? And then you're through. There's no registration charge. Yes, very good. Okay, so let's move ahead and let's move to the another very important ex examination that we have. is the ANTHE examination. It's a very important examination. So you can register yourself, right? And of course, it will be amazing. And you can definitely go to 
Now so, ma'am, have we done important questions of control coordination? Uh, and I have watched it today. We are doing the NCERT questions. We had a mentee quiz last week, and we will be doing more questions of control and coordination in the upcoming week. Okay, everyone, quick thumbs up, and are we ready? Thank you so much, Anushka. It's all of it's all for you. Okay, everyone, everyone, quick thumbs up, and we'll start. Yes, yes. Okay, I'm just gearing up. All of you get ready, right? Sanskriti, we already had a session on tissues, bache. We have it on our channel. Please uh, go and see it. You will be able to, you know, have that session, and you will be able to have all the questions and the concepts also. Awesome. So let's start with a very easy question, everyone. And I want you to answer this question really very quickly. I want some energy in the class, and we will make sure that all of us are in full of energy and are answering. Okay. Which of the following is a plant hormone? Now we know that hormones are the chemical substance that are released, and they have a very specific function. We have four options: we have insulin, thyroxin, estrogen, or the cytokinin. Which of these is a plant hormone? So very, it's a very very easy question. The correct answer is the cytokinin, right? Insulin is secreted by the pancreas, right? And of course, it controls what? It controls it controls the blood sugar level. Then of course, we have the thyroxin, right? Of course, controlled. Released by the thyroxin gland, right, and plays a very important role. Yes, and of course, then we have the estrogen, which is secreted by the ovaries, right, and help in the, right, help in the reproductive, basically help in the a female reproduction. Very good, very good. So it was an easy question. Moving to the question number two, everyone. Here we go. The gap between the two neurons is called as again. We don't have to go through the options also. It's such an interesting and super important questions. The gap between the two neurons is called as the answer is definitely the synapse, right? Option number B. Now dendrites are the one that will be receiving the information from the other neuron. These small projections. Exon is a long arm, right, which carries the information from the cell body, right? And of course, impulse. Basically, it's the signal that moves from one neuron to the Another neuron. Very good. Okay. Now again, a very easy question. The brain is responsible for thinking, regulating the heartbeat, balancing the body, or all of the above. Very good, Rohit. Very good. Yes. So the again, the correct answer for this question is option number D. Our brain is responsible for all of these, right? Thinking, cerebrum, right? Regulating the heartbeat, the midbrain, the involuntary activities, balancing the body, the cerebellum. Very good. Okay. Now moving to the theory part questions, everyone. Okay. Now what is the functions of receptor in our body? Now can can you quickly tell me what are receptors? We had a discussion, right? That what are receptors? So we in this particular question we have to find out what is the function of the receptor. And we have to think of a situation when if receptors will not work properly, what will happen? It's a very hypothetical situation question. Yes. So receptors are the basically when we talk about the receptors, they are the one that will be receiving the information from the environment. Right. Very good. IP receptor receives the stimulus or the stimuli from the environment. Very very good. And if they are not there, of course, we will not be able to get the information. Of course, we'll not be able to react to it. So they are present everywhere in the body. Detect the signals from the external stimuli and transfer it to the message to the brain. Transport the message as an electrical signals and crucial for responses. Status king stimulus, right? Or stimuli is nothing but an external factor. So, for example, light. Right over oh, here, I have the light. The light can be actually a stimulus for my eyes, right? In the dilation and in the contraction of the pupil of my eye. Sound can be a stimuli to which I am reacting. Yes. Okay. So that's about the receptor, and of course, a very extra information we have for you. Yes. So we have photoreceptors in the eyes that actually help us in the vision. We have olfactory receptors that are present in the nose. 
Then we have the gustatory receptors in the tongue. Very good, very good. We have phonoreceptors on in the hearing that plays a help in hearing, and of course we have the thermoreceptors for the touch. Very good, very good. Yes, yes. Good evening, everyone. Those of you who have joined us now, welcome to the class. I can see so many of you are here. If you're new here, everyone, please take a moment and subscribe to the channel. It really means a lot, right? Hit the bell icon and subscribe to the channel. It's okay, Navind, uh, Narendra. It's okay. Many of you, uh, you know, have this chapter in their half yearly examination. That's why we thought that we should have the session. All this together called as a sensory receptors. Yes, Amrita. Very good, Sahil. Brain diagram. We will have Ashwarya, ma'am, will be coming up with something really interesting. So yeah, yes. Ah, uh, good evening, Innovative Twenty Six. A little bit late. We have just moved with the three MCQs question. Okay, here we go, everyone, and this is how you can write the answer. It's very very easy. Yes, very good. We will be doing this chapter, and we have already finished, right? Okay. So receptors are present in all parts of the body. They detect the signals, and of course, send it uh, sent to the brain for uh, in a form of electrical impulse. And of course, we can write the example. If they are not working, or if they are not there in the body, what will happen? Of course, we will not be able to respond. And you can add the example over here also. Are we clear? Yes. Are we clear, everyone? Did you see? I think the team is working on that. They will be able to reach out to you. Okay, everyone. Are we clear? Quick thumbs up. Energy in the class. Energy in the class. These are really very easy questions, right? So this question is done for two marks. Moving ahead to the next question. Draw the structure of a neuron and explain its function. Very very easy question, right? I'm sure all of you are the master of it. So here we have the neuron. Okay. Starting with the very first function, which is of dendrite, PDF of the day sahil you will get after the session. Okay, we have the dendrites. Of course, they are the one that receive the signal from the other neurons and pass it to the neuron, like from cell body to the exon and so forth. Then, of course, we have the cyton or the cell body, right? The cell body has a nucleus, and of course, it will be receiving the information from the dendrites and will be passing it to the exon. Right here we go to the next one. That is the exon. It's a very long arm, and that carries the information and will be moving and will be giving it to the another neuron. But over here we have a very special thing which actually help, right? Which actually help in the conduction of it, which is the myelin sheet, right? Over here, it actually help the electrical impulse to transmit really very quickly. Okay, this is a very very important point. Hi Chitra, good evening. After a long time, yes, you will get the PDF for the same. Okay, then we have the nodes of Ranveer that actually allow the generation of of the the generation of the electrical impulse with the help of these nodes of Ranveer will be really very quick. Then, of course, in the end, we have the exon terminal, right? And of course, what we know that that the exon terminal are specialized to release the neurotransmitter. Yes, are we clear? Okay, you will get the PDF for this. Okay, so this is how you can draw. Interesting, right? Looks so beautiful. Yes, myelin sheet is not there in the NCERT. Yes, Sahil. Now, of course, it's a granule, right? So think about this: a granule which are present. Yes. Anyone know that answer? Please write. Okay, and of course over here you can. Okay, I'll just move aside. Please do take a screenshot of it. Right, please take a screenshot. <clears throat> you can take the screenshot of this. Right. Oh, this question was there very good. I hope that we have answered this correctly. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Very good. Now moving ahead to the question number six. 
And I said, it's a very interesting question. Now, this particular question, everyone, I want all of you to focus over here. Now, this particular question is a little bit trickier and is usually asked from the plant part, right? I'm sure the plant hormones are really very important. But there's one question specifically for three marks, which is, I'm sure you must have seen in the question papers, right? Usually, it's a kind of repeated question. Yes, Tejasmini. Yes. So, how does a phototropism occur in the plant? That's a question. I know it's not a trickier one, Adiba, Shahrukh. But over here, that's really very interesting, right? So, when we talk about, we know that oxygen is doing, right? But there's a way we can explain this. So, we know that sunrise, uh, sorry, sunlight is there. And of course, the plant, the, specifically the shoot part, will respond to the light. Yes? Now, of course, when the sun is there at the top, right, of course, the oxygen will be produced and of course, the cell will grow. Yes, it actually helps in the growth of the cells and basically, uh, uh, basically, it helps in the growth, oxygen, right? Now, as the sun will be moving, what will happen? The oxygen is being produced more in the shaded part or the darker part where it's not the direct sunlight which is falling. Are we clear? Yes. Okay. Acetylcholine, it's a neurotransmitter. Very good, everyone. Very good, very good. So, are we clear? So, we will see the production of the oxygen more on the shaded side where the sunlight is not coming directly. And as the oxygen is there more, what will happen? The cells will actually elongate. We will see that the cell will elongate and they will kind of bend, right? And that's why we will see that the plant will be bending towards the light. Yes, are we clear? Nice, Nilesh. In leaf, no, sir. Sanika, it's there in the shoot, bache. Bharadwaj, one shot of life process is done. Very good. Hi, Krish. Are we clear, everyone? Yes, in text question ki video ka baayegi, ma'am. Very soon, Sahil. Very soon. Are we clear, everyone? Quick thumbs up. Now, of course, we know that the, in the phototropism, in the stem, of course, the, the, the shaded side that we have will have the more of the oxygen, of course, that will be bending. Are we clear? And, of course, over here, we have the, some important points that you can write. Again, I'll quickly move aside. Please take a screenshot of it. Yes, please take a screenshot of this one. Okay, very good. Now, uh, in the terms of writing, three marks question, you can mention what is phototropism, right? Directed response to the plant. Allow the plants to grow towards the sun in the light. And then, of course, you can mention this. Leaf tape, stem tape, right? Have the hormone oxygen. This is a very sensitive to the light. It allows the plants positively to grow towards the sunlight. And, of course, we call it as a positive phototropism. Sunflower example, are we clear? Bharadwa, so the gap between the, so on the exon, right, there will be small, small gaps. These gaps are called as nodes of Ranveer and they actually help in the fast nerve induction transfer. My name is Ankita. Yes, yes, Amrita, it is. Okay. Okay, everyone, moving ahead to the next question. Ma'am, there are negative phototropism plants. Of course, negative phototropism will not see. They will just say, oh, oh, no, I don't want. So, negative will be the parts of the plant, like roots. They will show the negative phototropism. Okay? Innovative 26, are we clear? I pray, Anshu. Yes. So, uh, show production. Yes, production house. What's your name? I don't know. But oxygen is a hormone, which is a plant hormone. And when in the when the sun moves, right, or when the sunlight moves, what happens? There will be production of the oxygen hormone, right? And it will be producing more in the shaded part of the plant. And hence, the, it is there. The cells will get elongated and it will bend in a shot. Okay. Here we have this question, everyone. Can you quickly tell me which signal will get disruptive in a case of spinal cord injury? Yes. 
Very good. Sunil, the positive hydrotropism is the roots which shows, right? They move towards the water. Very good. Now, of course, we know that spinal cord is the best friend of the brain, right? And it does a lots of, lots of work. It basically connects the brain and the uh, peripheral nervous system, right? Provides a structural support, help in communicating, help in coordination and plays a very important role in the reflex action, right? So, if there is any defect or is, if there is an injury to, in the spinal cord, what will happen? The reflex action will be getting disruptive. Yes? Okay, here we go. Right, so over here, you can mention this. It's a very easy question. Okay, reflex action. Menti aaj nahi hai. Radha, yes. Your name is Radha, I've said it. Connect, very good. Rhea, reflex loop. Yes, innovative. Prakha, reflex action will not take place. Absolutely correct. We already had a mentee. We will be having the mentee the upcoming weeks. Okay. Are we clear with this question, everyone? Quick thumbs up. Quick, quick, quick. Yes. Interesting question, right? We have few more questions, everyone. Let's quickly solve these questions. Here we have. How does chemical coordination occurs in plants? Now, this is very interesting question. Easy question. A very straightforward question. Hai. Now, chemical coordination ko plants mein hone ke liye, what they need? They need hormones. Yes? Radha, I have taken your name. Yo, very good. So, we here we have the control and coordination in plants, which is done by the chemical messengers. And we call them as the plant hormone. Right? So, in plants, what we have? In plants, what we have? We have the plant hormones that actually help in the control and the coordination. And we also call them as the phytohormones. And there are five important or five different types of phytohormones that we have. We have auxin, gibberellin, cytokinin, abyssic acid and the ethylene. And now I will move. I know that you have studied this. But everyone take a quick screenshot of this. And then I will explain. Yes? I hope that. Please take a screenshot. Moving up gives a, giving the thumbs up. Yes? A very easy thing for you to, uh, you know, you can easily remember this in the examination. So, we have abyssic acid, site of synthesis in the shoot, right? And of course, in the young leaves. It actually help in the powerful growth. Promotes el cell elongation. Promotes the apical dormancy, right? Includes the parthenocarpy and delay the death. Gibralin. In meristematic epical birds and the roots help in stem elongation, breaks the seed dormancy and helps in the growth of the internodes. Yes. A cage. Very good dynamic gaming to remember all the hormones. Bye. Bye bye. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Then we have the cytokinin present in the roots. Basically, we'll see the synthesis in the roots. Transport to the other parts of the xylem. And this is really important for the cell division. Break the C dormancy and of course inhibit the epical uh, dominance. Then comes the prakhar. So uh, dormancy basically it kind of goes into the state where it's not doing anything. No, sorry. Uh, I've said something about, about the other string. So in this basically it will be kind of... For example, epical growth. So, if, if the, that time the epical growth will be happening more. Dominates or something, which is just happening. Yes. Then we have the ethylene, right? The only gaseous hormone that we have. Induce fruit ripening. Example, we can easily see in the banana. Right? Reduction in the cell elongation. Promotes the senescence, the, right? The aging process. And promotes the growth of the roots as well as of the root hair. And then we have the abyssic acid. Act as a growth inhibitor. This is the one that will be stopping the growth, right? Yes, very good, Sunil. Okay, and this induces the... Okay, are we clear? Please take a screenshot of this. Yes, everyone, please take a screenshot of this and we will move ahead. Yes, okay. 
Are we clear? Yes. Okay. So again, over here also we have the answers. Uh, the answer slide. This is also a very detailed one. Yes, so you can take a screenshot of this also. Okay. Okay, Chirayu, what is senescence? Basically, aging process. Deterioration of health will occur, right? And of course, in terms of plants, when we say they'll age and slowly, slowly the functioning will get disrupted. Yes, Amrita, absolutely. Okay, are we clear, everyone? It's a long theory, but you know how to write the answer. Okay. Yes, very good. And I think there was a question on the dormancy also. So basically, uh, like one at one particular time, it will be dominating somewhere, right? Epical dormancy means the epical growth will be dominating at that particular time. Very interesting. Okay, let's move ahead to the question number nine. You know, wait till I answer that question in a bit. Yes, Rinku, it is different, Bache. So of course, when we're talking about seed, we are specifically talking about the seed. The word of course meaning remains same. Bird dominancy, seed one, that could be the different case scenario. Okay. Okay. What is the need of a system of control and coordination in an organism? I am sure when we see such type of questions, we feel that it's a very vague question, right? We feel that as a question, mein kya likhenge, but these questions are really very easy for us to write. Now, what is the need of the system of control and coordination? Of course, we know that they are the ones that actually help in, in us to react to these stimuli, in help in the metabolism, help in the growth, help in the reproduction because they produce the reproductive hormones, right? And of course, basically does a lots of things. So the control is there. If the control is there, of course, it needs a little bit of coordination. And because of that, we can do various activity internally and outside also. Yes, very good. So of course, uh, here you can take the, it's a theory question. So over here we have given some text, right? You can write in your own words. You don't need such answer, but I'm just moving aside if you want to take a screenshot. Yes. Okay. Now ahead to the question number 10. How are involuntary actions and reflex action different from each other? Now it's a trickier question everyone. I want all of you to focus over here. The question is asking about the involuntary actions and the reflex action. Now one thing is common between these two. It is that it's not an entirely in our control, right? What do you say? Now of course there is a small difference we can say that we have. Okay, in voluntary action, of course, we don't uh, we don't have any control on the act, the movement of these, right? Okay, the beating of the heart, the movement of the food in the small intestine. You and I cannot control those actions. So we call them as the involuntary actions. Takes place in the conscious, without the consciousness of the individuals. Controlled by the medulla oblongata or the midbrain. So midbrain and the medulla oblongata plays a very important role over here. And of course, heartbeat and the digestion. Whereas the reflex action takes place along with the stimuli. So in this reflex action, there is an external stimuli. There has to be something from the external outside that will trigger us to act to something. Controlled by the spinal cord. And of course, we have the examples over here. This is a three marks question or can come for the four marks. But remember everyone, examples are must. Are we clear? Yes, you have to have to add the examples. Without the examples, these questions, you will not be able to get full marks. Very good. Awesome, are we clear with this? And this is how you can write the answer in the table form, right? So, this is the difference between the exocrine and the endocrine. So, endo word is inside, right? Yes, endocrine glands. So, endocrine glands are the glands that actually secretes the chemicals or the solution or the hormones, right? Internally, endo. Exo means outside. They literally is outside. Do you, okay, tell me, do you have any example, everyone, of the exocrine gland? Yes. See, we call pancreas as a both the glands, right? Endocrine also and the exocrine also. Yes? 
So pancreas is a good example. Now think, pancreas re releases the hormones also, and of course, what it releases? Different glands, or oh sorry, different juices also, enzymes also, duct and ductless, right? Very good, very good. So that's a clear cut division for this, and now we are moving to the next question. Very good, Ajay. Very good, everyone. Okay, last question, I think. Compare and contrast the nervous system and the hormonal mechanism for the control and coordination in animal. Not the last question we have. One more question after this. Okay, everyone, moving ahead to the next question. How can you compare and in contrast the nervous system and the hormonal coordination or the hormonal system? Interesting, right? So let's quickly discuss about the nervous system. Of course, we have the nerve impulse. Rapid information flow occurs, short response time and no specific action. Okay, uh, innovative duct means there is a tube basically through which the hormones or the chemicals will flow. Ductless means they just flow, flow in the randomness, blood, directly into the blood. Okay, so exocrine gland of course, see we know that hormones are the one that moves through the blood, right? So they are ductless, whereas a duct comes when the we have the uh, you know bile duct which is secreting all of these. That's an example I'm giving you over here. It's a both gland, both gland. Okay, okay. Over here, coming back to the question. So nervous system, of course, we have nerve impulse, rapid information flow. Right, there's no specific action, and of course, there's a short response time. Whereas in the nervous system, of course, we know that there is a release of the hormone, then the retraction information back, then long response time and a specific in the action. So over here, there's a table you can make. It's an easy question. It's a really very easy question. But uh, the important thing for you to make sure that, you know, it's how you write. So please take a screenshot. <coughs> <coughs> Very good. Yes, I think this is clear. And now moving to the question number 12. Three main functions of the nervous system. Kritika, we have just discussed. There's a rapid flow of the energy, controls and coordinate various things, right? Help in the reflex action and furthermore. Okay. Okay, Rinku, hydrotropism. Hydrotropism means... When there is a response towards the water. Hydro is the water, right? So, we know that plants ka root will move towards the... Plants root moves towards the water. That is the hydrotropism. Rinku, I hope that is clear. Okay. Here we have the question, everyone. What is the difference in the manner in which the movement takes place in a sensitive plant and a movement in a leg? Now, I am not answering this question. Please tell me. Yes, Ajay, we will be discussing about that, Bache. Tropic and the Nastic movement here in this particular question. Now, quickly tell me, everyone, what you think is a major difference, right, between the uh, sensitive movement, right, like touch me not plant, and of course, what is the difference in the movement in our legs? Yes? Rajat, welcome to the class. I hope that you have enjoyed the session. Very good, very good. It occurs externally. Yes. Anything else you want to add? Yes, yes, everyone. Okay. So let's see this. Okay, one minute. <clears throat> okay. So let's see over here. What we have, the movement in the plants, right? And of course, what we can see, we can see the touch me not plant. Yes. So, of course, the movement is sensitive response to the stimuli. Now, especially in the movements like these, there is an st external stimuli, right? And, of course, over here is the touch. There is no special tissues there for this particular process. Plant cells do not have specialized protein for the movement that we have in us. And plant hormones controls it. So Very briefly, we have this. It's a directional movement. Then, of course, when we talk about the movement in the animal, the movement of our legs is a voluntary action. There is an involvement of the C, uh, central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. There is a lot of coordination that occurs in the body. Then, of course, animal cells have specialized protein, right? 
they actually help the muscles to contract and relax and cerebellum of the brain controls this movement so are we clear yes chui boy me the touch me not plant ka hindi name okay are we clear everyone yes it's very easy question i would say take a screenshot everyone take a screenshot giving you thumbs up Yes, please take the screenshot. <clears throat> Very good. Okay. So with this, everyone, we are done. We are done. So, ah, uh, in your NCERT textbook, you had total of twelve question, right? Total of twelve questions were there. So we have discussed about the all NCERT questions. Now, I think there was a question, and we thought we'll we'll be discussing it later. What is the difference between, or what is the basically the dif uh, difference in the tropic movement and the nastic movement? So, of course, the tropic movement there is an external stimuli, and of course, we will see that the direction will be depending on the tropic movement, be it the light, water, etc. So, the plant will be moving in that particular direction, whereas the nastic movement is independent, right? It will not be moving in that particular direction, but to the external stimuli. Okay, are we clear? Yes. Now you tell me what do you think? Uh, innovative twenty six. Anyone? Do you have an idea? You can actually write the answer in the comment section below. A very interesting question. Innovative twenty six has is that how hormones actually travel in the plants? Is it through xylem or through phloem? Okay, I will be waiting for the answer in the comment section below. In over twenty six, you will get the answer. Sahil, touch me not plant. The example for that. Okay, Kritika, the uh, I can see lots of answer in the chat box, right? So of course, uh, Kritika, the important diagram in this particular chapter we don't have. First, of course, we have the neuron which can come, and the nerve impulse transmission. You can just show that how it is moving, that small synapse gap, and then, of course, uh, in the examination, the if the auxin question comes, you can draw the plant part, right? Right, and of course, you can show the auxin. Okay, everyone, are we clear? Yes, uh, I can go back to that slide. You can take a screenshot for the for the exam purpose over here. Everyone, please take a screenshot. You can draw this in the examination. <clears throat> yes, everyone. Please take a screenshot of this. <coughs> yes. Okay. If you zoom a bit, I can see. Uh, I think when I can see, uh, it's okayish. Yeah. Okay, everyone, are we clear? Good. So with this, everyone, we are done with our today's session. I hope that you have enjoyed the session, and please do hit the like button, right, and subscribe to the channel. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Brain diagram is important, Arti, but I doubt the in the examination the examiner will ask you to draw, right? Maybe you can have an extreme or uh, diagram based question, but they will not ask you to draw the whole brain. Okay? Yes, that's important. Okay, everyone. So join the Telegram community. I will be uploading the PDF of today's class. So please do get it. Yes. Okay. Now we know that whites have got to cover. Don't worry, everyone. And what we have? Don't forget to hit the like button. Share with your friends and subscribe to the channel. Yes, Amrita, neuromuscular junction or uh, diagram is important. Like basically, just to show that the you know, no neuromuscular junction. No, it's not important. The gaps between the synapse and the other neuron is important. Okay, bye everyone. Do take care. The Tejaswini, the important topic in this particular chapter, of course, the brain is there. Reflex arc. And the action, right? The reflex arc is really important. Animal hormones, they will ask you, but of course, there's so much, so it might just come for two marks. And plant hormone, my oxygen question is really important. Okay.
Yes. Okay, everyone. Diagram of tropism, it's not so important. It's not so important. Okay, everyone, Irfan, all the best for examination. All the best to all of you who have their examination tomorrow or day after tomorrow. On that note, I'll say bye-bye, everyone. Lots of love. We'll meet tomorrow. Take care of yourself and keep on learning with Baijus. Bye.